Welcome to Bandofla. You're watching episode 65 and looking at your screen, if you're watching on YouTube, we've got, we're lucky enough to have back in our virtual studio, Aydan Nevzat. Uh, Aydan was actually in Cyprus last time uh, we were on the, the podcast talking about our beloved Arsenal. Um, Aydan, you're, I believe you're in Edinburgh this time. Thank you very much for, for joining us. Good luck with your studies. Um, and we've got Ahmet Orhan. Uh, Ahmet was also on the show last time. These two guys are Arsenal fanatics. Um, Aydan was born in the season that we became invincible. Um, and Ahmet's a veteran of over 2,000 games, 60 seasons. Uh, so we've got two fantastic uh, guys to, to talk about how the season's been going so far. There's plenty of talking points. Um, I think we're going to start off, uh, guys. Um, we're 12 matches into the season. Um, probably most Arsenal fans will be fairly, fairly happy with the start. But I think the first talking point I want to get your views on really is the, the goalkeeping situation because Arteta made quite a big call um, by effectively dropping Ramsdale. Um, Ramsdale was starting to wobble a little bit, I think, um, but he's brought in Raya from Brentford, who a lot of clubs were after, um, and Raya has now pretty much established himself as a number one, um, certainly in Arteta's eyes. I don't know if that's the same, if we can say the same for if most Arsenal fans feel that way as well. Uh, Ahmed, I'll start off with you, my friend, uh, just in terms of the goalkeeping conundrum. Um, do you think that was a wise move that Arteta uh, did bringing in, in Raya, whether it was upsetting the apple cart? I mean, I don't know what your thoughts were on that. Well, first of all, evening to everyone. Um, it was a surprise, obviously, uh, to me and to everyone else. Um, I thought Ramsdale was doing quite well, and I'm a Ramsdale fan. He's he brings more to the team than just goalkeeping. I mean, he is one of the guys in the changing room with a fan, big favourite with the fans. But I think you just touched on that, whether he was going slightly, slightly stout. A couple of um, mistakes towards the end of the season and his comments about his concentration. You know, these days, everything is taken literally. Um, if you say my concentration wasn't there for 90 minutes, then, you know, the red flags come out. Um, I'm not so sure about that. I thought he was doing really well. Rare's a good goalkeeper. I don't think there's too much uh, between them. It's just that Rare is better on the ball with his feet. Um, not that he hasn't made any mistakes. He's certainly made mistakes, but uh, mm. at the moment, he played for Spain the, uh, the other night as well. So, mm. I'm in between here. I'm in between. I'll, I'll do, I am a Ramsdale fan, but I think Arteta's made up his mind with this one. Mm. I don't. I mean, I think Ahmed's got a point. Arteta does look like he's made up his mind. Um, and, you know, I don't... Goal, goalkeepers get... Uh, they're under the microscope a lot more, aren't they? You know, because they can do... They make one mistake and if it's costly... It, you know, all the fans are, are speaking about it. And even the, the game that we lost uh, against Newcastle recently, yes, that was a fiasco in terms of VAR, uh, awful um, decisions by, by by the officials in Stockley Park. Um, but Raya was seen, he was a bit wanting on on that goal as well. Um, I mean, what's what's your take, Aydan? Do you, do, have you got sympathy with Ramsdale or because there's a lot of Arsenal fans who are wondering, you know, and Arteta made that comment, a really interesting comment that he wouldn't be, uh, um, you know, he wouldn't uh, rule out substituting a goalkeeper at, you know, at half time or, or whenever, even earlier. Um, I mean, I don't know what your, your take is on the Raya Ramsdale situation. Yeah, I mean, I think I think uh, he's he's a man who likes to make his bold moves. He's not, you know, shy of going against what the what the ordinary uh, 
moves might be from a manager. Um, I think uh, I think it was a good idea to bring Raya in because Ramsdale, he was performing well, but I was worried he'd start getting complacent with no competition. So I liked this summer when Raya was brought in. Uh, but I don't know if he's such a big, you know, step up or improvement from Ramsdale. And, um, and yeah, he doesn't seem quite as confident, I'd say, in the team with the back four as Ramsdale did. But, but uh, as Ahmed Abi said, I think there's not much between the two. Mm. I think but I don't see Ramsdale, sorry, I don't see Ramsdale wanting to stay as a, as a number two goalie when he could easily be playing 90 minutes week in, week out at some top clubs in Europe. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, you know, I, I guess if we're going to challenge for some of these honours, you know, we, Arteta wants real quality back up in every single position, um, you know. And, I mean, I have to say, if I look at Manchester City, obviously they've got... Um, uh, the the Brazilian guy in in goal, um, but I couldn't tell you who the backup goalie is, um, you know. So, but I think he came on in a cup game and and did did quite well against us last year, um, you know. But it's it's important that we have these this depth in our squad, you know. So, um, Ahmed, in terms of some of the the injuries that we've had, um, you know, do you think we've been we've been wanting in terms of our squad um or do you th are you a lot happier with the squad at the moment you know if you look at the the, the injury to timber at the back um defense has looked fairly okay um even though we haven't had him in the team but i, I don't know what how you feel about the depth of the squad at the moment i feel the depth of the squad in uh in defense is more than adequate timber i can't express how much that was bad luck and unfortunate for us because in pre-season training and even in the first half of the first game of the season where he got injured mm. he was making a difference and uh, I like him I like him a lot um, other than that Odegaard's hit us um, a little bit of off form I mean the guy plays week in week out a little bit like Saka as well week in week out I would have liked Saka to have had like three to four weeks off and the international break, a good break for him because we're going to need these guys. We, uh, you know, once we hit February, uh, February, March, we're going to need them. The problem we have is up front. We don't, excuse me, uh, <coughs> we don't seem to have a spearhead up front, a forward that will crack us, but, uh, you know, 18 to 22, 24 goals a season. I think that's, the next big one for next season, pre um, in uh, June, July, I think Arteta's got to really address that one. Um, whether it's someone like whether he's got a whether the plan is to every season buy a eighty to a hundred million pound player. If that was the case, or everyone's after Osman of uh, Napoli. Mm. Whether he's got an attitude problem or not is a big time Charlie. I've heard, I don't know, but we do need someone up front who's going to put the uh, ball away. Other than that, um, yeah, left back could be a little bit of a problem. I mm. think we're covered on the right somewhat with um, uh, Tommy Yasu and Ben White. Mm. Um, I think Saliba. Is he going to be the best centre-half in our history? Potentially. I know that's a big, big thing to say because I'm a defensive man. Um, whether it's McLintock or whether it was O'Leary, you know, with time, Sol Campbell, Tony Adams, Saliba is different gravy. I love, I love, I'll, I'll pay the money just to see Saliba. He, I love him. And he, uh, Gabriel compliments him really well. We may have, the two of the best centre halves uh, in the UK. Yeah, Saliba is definitely mustard. Yeah, uh, it, it's you hardly ever see him ruffled, and even when he's in a position where he's, you know, the the striker's got a couple of yards on him, uh, he's got incredible pace and strength yeah. and, and timing. Yeah, and he's got 
he, he's so cool. He, I mean, a couple of times this season already, some of his tackles have got a bigger cheer as any of our goals. It's, you know, mm. it's, it's phenomenal to see. So I think we need someone up front to complement Saka on the right, Martinelli on the left. Trossard has done really, really well. Really mm. well. But he's not a centre forward. Yeah. No, definitely. Mm-hmm. I, I think um, I'm going to bring just something else in a bit, um, bit, bit <coughs> new because it's it's hit the news, um, and it'll be good to get both of your thoughts on this. Um, I don't obviously in the news, uh, you know, al- almost feel sorry for Everton. I did say almost. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they've uh, had was it just the one charge, um, and they've had a 10-point deduction, which has seen them drop down to four points, second from bottom. Um, and I don't know, loads of Arsenal fans are thinking, oh, my God, you know, one charge, 10-point deduction. What is going to happen to Manchester City? There's, they've got, I, I don't know how many charges there are, but it's, you're talking, I think it was 150-odd or something. 115. Yeah, 115 charges, right? Uh, obviously, probably they probably won't be found guilty of all of them, but you know I think it's safe to say that they will be found um, guilty of at least a few of them. Um, where does this leave, you know, Manchester City? I mean, and football fans around the world are thinking, you know, come on, let's see the authorities, you know, stand by their their clout, stand, you know, stand by their regulations that they look to uphold. What do you think should happen to Manchester City, Aydan? Well, I mean, yeah, firstly to address Everton. When I read it, I did feel quite bad. I mean, they've gone from, they were already, you know, only on 14 points so far this season. They've dropped to four, they're now 19th. Uh, I read something like the relegation odds are now 30% higher, uh, which, yeah. It's not looking great for them. And I think it kind of shows that money can get you some serious lawyers. Uh, I think that's what it's shown. You know, the fact that Man City for the last how many years, you know, on and off have been somehow avoiding and getting away with the charges. Yeah. Um, in terms of what it means for Man City, I would hope that it would mean that, you know, they're put under a bit more pressure there's a bit more investigation but in all honesty I don't think it's something that you know their close oppositions can bank on for you know overtaking them or saying okay now that Everton have been charged maybe we'll see Man City drop five points that means now we can get closer I think I think I've I've been reading quite a bit of this recently and I think you know for a team like us we should still be focusing on trying to get better, not trying to see Man City drop. Because in reality, even if they do lose, let's say four or five points, I don't think uh, I don't think it'll be a huge, huge setback for them. We've seen what they can do, even when the odds are against them in the last few seasons. You know, mm. we saw we experienced that six yeah. months ago. And I think Chelsea's uh, looking over their shoulder. Yeah. As well, so it it will be interesting to see. Ahmed, come in on this, please. Um, I I, I personally think Everton will a- appeal, and mm. I rec- I think that ten points will come down to about five. Um, it's very very harsh on Everton. I mean, it was apparently on the interest um in uh, interest that they've been paying on the loan for the stadium. I think that's very very harsh. Now going back to Manchester City. The problem that the FA or the Premier League have is Manchester City have got better lawyers than the FA and the Premier League. (laughs) And um, that that speaks a lot. Uh, Chelsea are the ones that should worry because Chelsea uh, is more black and white. Um, I think Manchester City is a little bit more up in the air and uh, they say that they can prove that they've they've done nothing wrong. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd rather nothing happen and we won the league uh, if we were to win the league um, uh, fair and square. Because I don't mm. want people to say, well, if Manchester City hadn't been uh, dropped 10 points or whatever, then you wouldn't have won the league. 
No. Mm. Yeah, let, 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 let's sort that out. I'm not too bothered about that. I don't think anything will happen to Manchester City. They won't have any trophies rescinded. That's crazy. That That is crazy. I don't think anything like that should happen. But um, they'll probably get a fine of 15, 20 million. So the Sheikh will have to just sort of like dip, dip, dip into his back pocket and say, yeah, boys, there you go. Let's get on with it. So you can't see Man City being put in the Conference League then? <laughs> that, that, would, that would, you know, their fans would love it. They're they're, they're really good fans, actually, Man City. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think anything will happen. Yeah, you know, the one interesting fact or one interesting point yeah. coming out of this is you make the point about retrospectively possibly yeah. the trophies that Manchester City yeah. won. Yeah, uh, one of those trophies was also against Spurs. Yeah, in the league. Yeah. So yeah, they're very up. outside chance, yeah. Spurs fans. Yeah, well, they'll be clutching at straw, any, any straw <laughs> they will, to shine, shine a trophy. I mean, you know, all that silver silver shining stuff that they've got ready, you know. Look, it's, come on, uh, they, they must have, they have one of the most emptiest trophy cabinets in the whole world, you know. Um, yeah, you know, I, I nearly felt sorry for them, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, it's a spirit. It's only a little bit. Bless them, bless them. Yeah, only a little bit. All right, listen, so coming back to Arteta, because this uh, one of the angles for coming out of this podcast is in Arteta we trust. And I think Arsenal fans, by and large, still stand by Mikel Arteta yeah. uh, and the board, you know, the setup at the club. Um, I think you both made the point really well in episode 61 around the direction that the club's going. It's got a vision. It's It's got a strategy. Um, and, you know... The Kroenke um, setups abroad at Armour in terms of the NFL, um, mm. hockey, you know, yeah. NBA, etc. They're they're doing yeah. doing well, and obviously they want they want yeah. success in in the in the Premier League. In terms of Arteta's tactics this year, um, and the signings that we made, because uh, I remember we we talked about what possible signings, and this was before we bought Declan Rice. Um, and we we got linked with Gundogan and and some others, um, but I I wonder I, I'll start with you, uh, Ahmed, just quickly, in terms of uh, Mikel's tactics this year, and then I don't I'll come to you about the effectiveness of of the signings that we made in the summer, um, in terms of the first twelve games, and our performances in the Champions League, which I think has been quite interesting. Uh, but Ahmed, first to you, in terms of yeah. with, with me, uh, there's no other choice. Arteta's my man. Arteta will bring us to pro to the promised land if we're ever going to get there. He will. He can do it. Um, Arteta, I think last has, has had a good look at last season, and he's thought to himself, "Well, what can I do? Do something different. We don't want to be the same Arsenal. We want to do tactically something a bit different. You know, have our in and mm. you know t timber definitely has been an improvement have arts you know the jury's still out with him declan phenomenal um i think sometimes like last season and pep's done it before as well he overthinks he overthinks he tries to be too clever play your game play the game that we know of, uh, how to play and we'll be okay a lot of it can seem tedious but if you look at the teams that come to the Emirates now, you know, low block, you know, mm. they're waiting for us to make a mistake and that type of thing. You know, uh, they don't mind leaving with a point. So he's got his work cut out. So what he needs to do, he needs, he really needs to replace uh, Granite Zach Xhaka, which he hasn't yet. And Havertz is not going to do that. So he needs to go out and buy a young, uh, equivalent um, to play in that position. Uh, I think that's all we need. We need someone to play in the Zaka position and someone up front. And I think um, you'll, you'll see uh, Arteta and Arsenal improve uh, by a mile. Yeah. No, good point, Sam. <coughs> I don't what What do you think in terms of Arteta's tactics? Because I, I think by and large, He's done okay, I think. What, what, let, let's have a quick look into 
the Champions League because the the mm. performances have been quite strong. Yeah. Um, and although I thought against Lens, I, I thought we were particularly weak in that game. Uh, I don't know what your overall assessment is at this early part of the stage I've done. Uh, I mean, I think in terms of the transfers we've brought in, Declan Rice has been has been outstanding. He's really, you can see the impact he has every single game and his work ethic, the distance he covers and, and the fact that no one's talking about how he cost us £100 million. Mm. Uh, Havertz, on the other hand, you know, I'll always back whatever Arteta believes is right for the club. I'm just still yet to see a justification for the 65 million spent. But, and I agree that we need to find a replacement for Jack. Actually, when you were talking about the injuries, the first one that sprung to my mind was Thomas Partey and the fact that mm. he's constantly injured. As great of a player as he is, and as well as he performs when he's not injured, the reality is uh, he is, you know, sidelined for so many of the games that is he someone that we can rely on to play the great football that we do play, you know, week in, week out and for the whole season? Can we really rely on Thomas Partey to be that man? Because if the answer is no, then who do you pair Declan Rice with in the midfield? So I agree that we need to sign another midfielder because, okay, Jorginho, he hasn't been bad, but I don't think he's he's an investment for the future. I don't think that was Arteta's plan with him anyway. And I don't see anyone else really in the club right now who can fill that other central midfield spot, that jacker shaped hole, if you will. Mm. And he's setting the world alight uh, at Leverkusen in the Bundesliga. Uh, I think he's ranked uh, one on so many different levels, uh, which is brilliant to see. And, and it underlines really the, how badly we missed him. To, we're missing him. Um, but I agree. I think I'd like to see Partey, Odegaard um, and Rice in the middle. I think that would be our, our strongest um, midfield kind of link up but um I, I, like you you say I done Partey's um it, it been quite prone to being injured this season so it's uh, it looks as though Arteta isn't going to be able to rely on that I don't think moving forward which is a bit sad for me because I'm a massive fan of Thomas Partey I, I think he's brilliant he pulls he just marshals the, the midfield when he plays um and I think he will free up um, Odegaard and, and Declan to to be even more offensive, you know. Um, okay, so all right, let, let's let's quickly touch on in terms of we're obviously in November now. Uh, is the 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 January transfer window isn't a million miles off. Um, Ahmed, you're quite well connected in terms of football gossip with the club. Um, I'm seeing quite a lot of what I personally think is rubbish, but I don't know whether there's any truth in it. Um, but apparently Kroenke's going to get rid of three or four uh, relatively big name players and bring in um, Mbappe is is the stories that I'm seeing on that. You know, I'm, I'm just seeing from both of your reactions that you probably think that the same as I do. But, I, you know, you've got your ear quite close to the ground, mate. I don't know what, what, you're, um, what you've heard. Well, I... Well, I haven't heard anything about Mbappé myself, and I think it's a little bit of, um, you know, sort of like international break news. Mbappé has got, I feel, a lot of these European players, it's Real Madrid or Barcelona for them. You know, they, they that's where they up their um, um, Instagram and Facebook numbers. That's where they get the recognition of the Euro, Euro kid and around the world especially South America, now North America, where the fans look at numbers and the young fans between the ages of 12 and, mm. say, 25 will be looking at Real Madrid, Barcelona. If, now, Cronke, uh, if Cronke was to do something like that, it would be sensational. You can, uh, might as well next season, um, <clears throat> bring the Premiership straight to Arsenal. If Mbappe's in that mind, and then Mbappe, don't forget Wenger, 
was only £500,000 away from bringing Mbappe here. But um, I think he's, he might still have that little shining light for Arsenal, but it's a big, big if, you know. The guy's on, what, £2 million a year? Uh, £2 million a week. <laughs> you know, one and a half million a week to Arsenal aren't going to give that, you know, uh, and I wouldn't want them to really give that. So I, I'm not sure. Would he be the answer? Would he take Martinelli's place? You know, you know, and Mar- of course he's better than Martinelli, although I love Gabby uh, more than anyone that's listening on in on this. Um, so it might be a little bit pie in the sky. Uh, we, we do need a, a central for, uh, uh, forward, uh, that's without a doubt. But uh, other than that, we'll see. We'll see what they've got in plan. Yeah, that's uh, interesting, Ahmed. I don't know. I mean, on the centre forward point, obviously Eddie got a hat trick against Sheffield United the other day. Um, I, uh, Jesus has had his injury problems, and um, there's starting to be a lot more speculation around Ivan Tony because he's banned is coming to an end. Um, I think he's got another month um, and he's going to be itching um, to to play. And he, I don't know if you, either of you saw his comments. Uh, he was interviewed by the diary of a CEO um, guy, the, the, the chap on the Dragons then. And he's got, he's got a clear soft spot for Arsenal. Uh, he said some really nice things about, our club and how much you know he he really likes the way we play um and he loves our fans um the energy that our fans provide um can you see Ivan Tony um playing at the Emirates next year I mean I don't see why not but you never know how much Brentford could be asking for 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 Tony uh, he he was good when he played whether he can replicate that form and he'd need to also step up a bit, you know, playing at Arsenal, playing fast pace. He'd have a lot more support around him at Arsenal. But whether he would be, whether he should be the, as Ahmed was saying, the big, the big 80 to 100 million splash for the summer, I don't know. I don't know if he's, well, he hasn't proven himself, for example, in the very recent past as someone that we can rely on and we can, you know, confidently spend that money on. Because I think the expectations are rising every week uh, from Arsenal. And to be able to keep improving as we are and to be able to, you know, achieve what, Arteta clearly wants to achieve what the players want to achieve, what the fans have been waiting to see for so long. I think those big moves need to be with more confidence now and, you know, with more proven people because we have, we now have more of a status to be able to bring in some bigger names. And I'm not taking away from the quality or the, or the status of Ivan Tony. I just think if it's a big summer move, it should be, mainly based on how that player has performed over the last, you know, over the 12 months leading up to that transfer. Mm. Interesting. I mean, I, I think he's an absolute beast. Um, whenever he's played against Arsenal, um, I, I think he, last time he played at the Emirates, he, we were watching, he was even beating Saliba in the air. Uh, Army. I was, I was so impressed uh, with Tony. Um, personally, I, I think he's, He's a, a a very accomplished striker, um, and I think he would be a, a brilliant addition uh, for for Arsenal. But I don't I don't know what your thoughts are, Ahmed, on on Ivan Tony. Um, he'll definitely be better than what with with all due respect to Eddie and Ketia. He's a Halem boy, and I will always always stick up for our Halem boys. But he'll definitely be an upgrade on Eddie and Ketia and Jesus as well. Jesus with his injuries and his lack of goals really for that number nine shirt. Ivan Tony will definitely come in and do a better job. But it, it, will Arsenal pay sort of 80 million plus for a player? What is he? 26, 27, 20? Mm. He is in his prime. But, you know, what would you do? 
give another 20 million and get a 21, 22 year old uh, mm. young striker, you know, sort of like from one of the Spanish or the uh, Italian leagues. I'm, I'm not really up to date with most of these young kids coming through. So, yeah. but he would definitely be an upgrade on what we've got now. Mm. Yeah, I think I think you make a good point. I don't on. I don't. I don't think any of us question the guy's talent and ability. But I think you're you're right. It's just that figure, the, the question mark yes. around what he's going to potentially cost. Um, that would probably be the big stumbling block for for Arsenal. Um, okay, as we're coming towards the end of this podcast, episode sixty five. Um, if you're listening on Spotify or watching us on YouTube, I hope you're enjoying our our friends uh views on all things arsenal um is there anyone else we should be looking at in terms of signing in a forthcoming transfer window um i think i'll give you first uh stab at this army if you look at the front line um you know obviously we've just mentioned ivan tony is there anyone else um, I, I, I heard Richarlison might be going a bit cheap. Um. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 yeah, yeah, he'd be going cheap at Easter, but cheap, cheap, cheap. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Um, the only other person, if it weren't for his attitude as well, would have been Vlajevic from Juventus because he was um, up on our radar before he went mm. to even Juventus. Juventus was his boyhood team. You know, he's a he's a Serb. And they all love the Italian league. And Juventus was his team. And in a way, uh, his agent used Arsenal to get to bump up the fee for Juventus for him to go there. Now, whether Arsenal could go into Juventus tomorrow and say, here's 60 million, Bob your uncle, Fanny Geron, Vlajevic here. But I think that Arsenal won't do that because he, uh, Arsenal feel they, they were used with him. So other than that, I really don't know. That's that's one for Edu and his team to have a look at, whether it's South America or whether it's Europe. But we certainly need someone to be able to link up with Martinelli and Saka. Hmm. I don't know. Um, on the last episode, again, the, Ahmet made the point about Saka not being played so much. Um, and I remember the cheeky comment around, when we play the easier teams like Spurs, uh, Saka should be rested, which is a very relevant, uh, <laughs> genuine point. Um, but seriously, though, I mean, I th- I do think we do need cover for Saka because we, we, the danger is he's going to have a really bad injury um, and we'll end up missing him. So d- do you think there's any particular players uh, that we should look at? Um, I know one springs to mind. Um, but I don't know, just in terms of having that decent cover for Saka, does anyone spring to mind in, you, in your head? For me, not in particular, because I feel like the profile of that player would have to be quite specific. You know, someone who's not such a huge name and on fire right now in Europe who would want to be playing, you know, uh, first team football at one of the top clubs in the top leagues because realistically they would struggle to get that uh, as a right winger at Arsenal. Uh, but then we, it would need to be someone of good quality. You know, I think, I think that finding players, backup players is one of the hardest jobs mm. because, because of the fact that trying to find quality who don't demand first team football is so difficult. So, there isn't someone who springs to mind particularly. What about Nevers at, from at Wolves? He's a, he's a player that's really caught my eye. Um, very similar to, to Saka as well. Um, very, yeah. very creative. Got a cracking shot. Got an eye for goal. Um, and I don't, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure how old he is. Um, but he probably won't be cheap. But I think Neves would be quite good cover. Yeah, I think I think, and he does he does kind of you know fall into that bracket. Who I think would be willing to to join Arsenal, but not expect to play every minute. Mm. 
Yeah, Ahmed, I don't know what your what your views are because you made the point in the last episode about Saka, and obviously, hopefully, Arteta playing Reese a little bit more. I mean, Reese has had a, a few more minutes this season, mm. but not mi- much more. Um, but who who can we get to just give that protection to Saka, that cover? Well, Reese is the natural one, but lack of minutes for Reese. I mean, the last game he played. He was didn't make any impact at all. Uh, I do like Reese again. He's a Halen boy. Uh, Neves is actually a really good shout. Um, I think we've been linked with him before. So, mm. yeah, I think Saka does need help there because uh, he's being kicked black and blue. You know, at times no protection from nor- Northern refs. I want to. I want, don't get me onto Northern refs again. Um, yeah, so he does need protection, but uh, very important. I mean, Trossard has been tried there before, but Trossard seems to be more on the left yeah. rather than the right. So he, he's, he's an option. Marquinhos, who came in and was going to do this, has gone was at Norwich. I don't know what's happened to him in Norwich. He's probably having a holiday in Great Yarmouth. Uh, <laughs> but I haven't heard too much of him. So I don't think he would, he's he been the answer either. Maybe... Maybe Edu and his team have to look a little bit harder for that. Mm. Okay. All right, guys, the obvious um, point to finish on is, you know, we're 12 get matches in. Um, has, has anyone really stood out this season for you, Aydan, in terms of the team? Apart, I mean, obviously, uh, Armit's mentioned how brilliant Saliba's been. Um, anyone anyone else uh, have stood out for you? I think, as we mentioned, Declan Rice, I think he really, I mean, he had, there was a very high bar for him when he, when he first joined the club, you know, uh, the media and the fans weren't really going to give him an easy time if he put a, a foot wrong, basically, in the first few games because of that price tag. But he's, I think he's silenced everyone and I love watching him play. I love the way he commands the the midfield, but not only the midfield, but you know, the edge of our box and the edge of the opposition's box. He's always there. He's always, you know, wanting the ball or getting the ball for us and playing it forward. And yeah, I just think I just think he's phenomenal and he's such a joy to watch every single game. Hmm. I I, I tell you who surprised me, who hasn't played very often, and there's a lot of fans who was, who have been really impressed with him. And we were talking about him in terms of whether we'd sell him, loan him, or or keep him on the last episode. Uh, Tommy Yasu. Um, I think Tommy Yasu's been brilliant when he's come on, uh, Ahmed. You know, whether he's been in, I think he got played in the centre of defence for one game. Uh, he played in the centre of defence for Japan against, was it Germany? I can't remember. Uh, and he had an absolute stormer. Uh, and even playing fullback, he's he looks really accomplished. And if he can stay fit, um, I, I think he's going to be he's going to have an amazing season for us. Yeah, Tommy Asu, he's the type of guy that um, Arteta brings into sort of not man mark, but a specific area. Yeah. He'll make that his own, and he's very good at that. Um, you know, if you want sort of like to be that patient build up, and as he did with Manchester at the Manchester City game at home, Tommy Asu was brought in to do a job, and he'd done that brilliantly. And we won one nil, of course. So, yeah, Tommy Asu, Saliba's been outstanding, and but Declan Rice, he's got this nickname of Rolls Royce, and he's living up to it. The other thing uh, that really uh, is different this year: last season we were scoring goals. Early on, do you know, after 12 games in the Premier League, here's a nice stat for you. We haven't scored before 15 minutes yet. Really? So oh. that puts that puts pressure on the fans. That's why the fans have been getting early goals last season. Mm. Here we are. Away we go. The songs come up. We won the league at Anfield, all of this stuff. But after 15 minutes, the fans, the natives become restless. Mm. Um, so there's a little bit of that as well, but um, player wise, I think Rice and Saliba are probably becoming world class, yeah. And and we need 
um, Martinelli and Saka to be be fit and on top of their game. I think offensively they offer us so much, and I think defenders are just shit scared of of them when they're on their game. So, right, final predictions. Then I can't li- let you both go without um, what you what what you think is going to happen throughout the course of the season. Uh, I don't. I'll start with you. How do you see this season finishing for Arsenal in terms of whether we you know, whether we manage to, to get any trophies or silverware. Genuinely, I don't have, you know, any less confidence in the team uh, than I did, for example, you know, eight to ten months ago. I genuinely think that, you know, we the team would have learned from last season. Arteta has made a few big calls leading into this season. And I think, and I think, this team does have the quality and the mindset to go all the way. Competition is looking a bit a bit more difficult in the sense that there are more teams competing, but you know, I don't think Man City are miles ahead of the rest of the pack like they were, like they were, especially in the second half of last season. So so I do think with the right mentality, this team can can win the league. In terms of the Champions League, I don't think we're quite there. I mean, I I will always, you know, hope and support the team in you know in any efforts in Europe. But I think they'll need a few more seasons under their belt before we can, you know, expect a real challenge for that. Mm. And I would I would rather see, you know, an all out approach to the Premier League this season, personally. Mm, thanks, Aidan. So Ahmed, before you you give your view on that, just quickly on on the Champions League. I I I mentioned the game against Lens, which which I thought started off well, but for some reason we 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 collapsed in that game. Um, but apart from that game, we I, th- I think we've looked quite accomplished back in in the Champions League, and we look quite comfortable. Um, I know we haven't played anyone massive yet, but the mentality and the application of the club um, it seems quite good um, from where I'm standing. Yeah, the first game against PSV, we just blew them out of the water. It was as if, well, we're back. What a great game that was. Secondly, Lons away. Um, yeah, maybe we got a little bit too big for our boots there. And Lons scored a great first goal and uh, we're up against it, although we've taken the lead. Seville away was a good game. Yes. Well. Seville at home, Seville weren't very good. We were, you know, we didn't really have to come out of third gear uh, to beat Seville. Now, we will qualify, of course. All you need is one or two good draws. Next thing you know, you're looking at a quarterfinal or a semifinal. Mm. Now, I don't think that we'll do go further than that because, you know, statistically and historically, a team that's in the Champions League for the first season very rarely goes all the way through. They need to sort of be baked a little bit, two, yeah. three, four seasons, and then they'll go for it. Dare I say Tottenham proved that as well when they got through to the final. You need two, three, four seasons yes. just to get used to, used to all of that. Uh, with the league, I, st- I, th- I still think City, of course, are the team to beat. Now, <coughs> excuse me, if, if City win, it'll be four in a row. And I don't think they'll do that. So I, I think that if City were to drop, it's not just City we've got to come up against Liverpool uh, there or thereabouts so I think it's a three horse race now um, Spurs don't like three horse, uh, two horse races they once came third in a two horse race so um, Spurs w- won't be there um, Newcastle I don't think so I think we'll finish third really yeah. I mean that won't be a bad season um, yeah. you know I think yeah. I think as long as he's building and in, you know yeah. making our squad yeah. better um, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to delve too much into negative bullshit, but mm-hmm. it does wind me up. There's some 
fan TV platforms which effectively call for his head when we go a goal behind. I mean, I, I just I'm not going to I'm not going to mention their names and give him any any uh, publicity. Um, but honestly, some uh, Arsenal fans don't fall for the the nonsense that unfortunately some of our our fans are are peddling. Um, you know, it's uh, as I tell Spurs fans, the season is a marathon; it's not a sprint. Uh, as they found in the space of a week when they were top of the league celebrating, I think they released their DVD as well. Um, you know, it's you know, and already the wheels have come off for them. Um, you know, so it's um, it, it is a it is going to be a long season, um, and I I, th- I think you're both right. I think there's going to be lots of highlights uh, to look forward to, um, and obviously the the final message has to be just get behind. You know, stay behind the team. The the two um, guys on the podcast today are stalwarts in terms of you know through uh, thick and thin. Um, so you know, stay behind the team, support the boys, and we we will hopefully have a, a good season. Uh, my thanks to Idan joining us from Edinburgh. Uh, Idan, you're a bit of a globe trotter. Last time you was in Cyprus, now you're in the in the beautiful city of Edinburgh, one of my most favourite cities. Um, and Ahmet, um, he's, he's the founder of the uh, group Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal on Facebook, a veteran of 60 seasons uh, following Arsenal. Um, thank you very much, guys, for, for joining me on episode 65. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to uh, Bandofla on Spotify if you're listening. If you're watching on YouTube, please do subscribe as well. My name is Febzi Hussein, and you've been watching or listening to Bandofla. Take care, everyone. Good night and God bless. Hello.